Today I want to show you our recent delivery for homeschooling. Hi everybody, welcome back to Bustling Home. The big kids who are five years old, or probably coming up on five and a half now, are moving on to level three in All About Reading. They have just a few lessons left in level two, but I think those are going to go really quick. So I ordered level three early and just got it in recently. Let me show you what we got. We got the reader called Chasing Henry. So this is the first reader from level three, all about reading. It has a cute little dragon, which my kids will love. When we open the reader, as this book belongs to, I'm not filling that out because I'm starting out with two kids at a time and there are four more behind them, so it doesn't belong to anybody. This is the color edition. We have the table of contents. There are 12 stories in this first book, and probably about the same in the second book then. So let's look at the format of these stories. First, Train Cat. All of the pictures in this color edition are very nicely illustrated and very colorful. And it is looking more like a chapter book than the prior books in this series. So it says, Gray clouds filled the sky. The wind howled as rain began to fall chug 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 the mail train strained to get to the top of the steep hill kind of dramatic for a five-year-old but i'm sure they'll love it especially rory with trains so about maybe half of this page is filled with text then another small paragraph on this page some of them have a little more than half the page filled but none of them are terribly overwhelming it as we get later in the book there are about the same number of words per page. Some of the pages have a lot more words, like the entire page is filled with words. So this we might break up between the two kids, we'll see. But they are starting to work their way into chapter books that have color pictures at least. So maybe by the time they get to this story they'll be ready for reading that on their own. And it gets to be more and more words as this book progresses and probably the same in the second book too then. But all throughout the book, there are very nice color illustrations. So far, my kids have loved the stories. Now, let's compare this level 3 reader to a level 2 reader and then a level 1 reader so that you can see how it progresses. This is the level 2 reader that my kids are on right now. In level 2, there are two readers. You can see level 2, volume 2 on the bottom here. In level 1, there are three readers. So, the book starts out the same, of course. There are 13 stories in this book, so about the same number of stories. But you'll see the word density is somewhat less. Like in this first story, it starts out, starts out with a picture on this page, and then just four short paragraphs on the other page. And same thing here, there are only four very short paragraphs, a couple short lines here. And then we get some of these pages that have more text like this one, but there aren't too many of them. Then we go to a couple of pages that are mostly picture again. So this is somewhat less dense with the words than the level three reader. Now keep in mind that this is the second part of level two. You can see that just like level three, this has a lot of very nice color illustrations. And my kids really like looking at the pictures and trying to guess what the story is about. So let's take a look at level one. Here's the level one reader that my middle kids are on right now. This is volume two of three for level one. Again, same format in the front, of course. Now this has 18 stories in a book that's about the same size. And there are three volumes in this, so there are actually more stories. But when the kids read stories in level one, usually it's two stories per lesson, not one story. That makes it a little bit easier to split the lesson up if you need to, because you can read one story and then read the other story a different day if you need to. So let's take a look at this first story in the second volume. You'll notice that there are only two very short sentences. Kent held his tin raft. It was bent. 
and these are underlined to help the kids track across the line. And with my kids, I also point to the words as they read them because my kids are on the young side for doing this curriculum. If you recall, my middle kids are not quite four years old yet. And we still have the very nice color images on all these pages and very few words in here. So if we flip to the back of this book, this is the end of the second volume. There still aren't too many more words. And it doesn't change that much in the third volume for level one either. So there aren't too many more words by the end of level one in All About Reading. So it can be a bit of a jump going from level one to level two. And in the beginning with level two, we had to split the stories up with my kids and take a break in the middle of it because the stories were just too long for them when they jumped from level one to level two. But they actually got used to it surprisingly quickly. I don't think it'll be quite as big of a jump going from level two to level three. The stories might be a little bit longer, but I think they'll handle it okay ultimately. We also got Shipwreck, the other reader. The stories don't get too much longer or more involved, it looks like. So that strategy will probably work throughout the entire level. Now let's take a look at the instruction manual and the activity book. We got the teacher's manual. This, if you are a new homeschooler, is gold. This tells you exactly what to do, and every lesson so far has been in the same format. I can't guarantee it'll be that way for levels three and four, but it seems pretty likely since it's pretty much the same format from pre-reading through level two. So this is the level three instructor manual or teacher's manual, whatever you want to call it. Let's open it up. The table of contents shows you what you need to do to prepare for the level, which at this point I don't even read that anymore because it's the same every time. Part two shows you all of the lessons and what they cover. So if you want to see what your kid will be learning in each of these lessons, it shows you all of the phonograms. So they're going to start out with a review, which is all of the single letter phonograms and all of the multiple letter phonograms that they've learned before. So if you're going right from one level into another, you might not need to do this first step or first lesson rather. Then they jump right into lessons with new phonograms, AI and AY. So I'm really looking forward to getting to these and adding some more to my kids' repertoire. Part three is the appendices. And these are really useful. If you're just starting with All About Reading, make sure you look at these before you start, if you at all can manage it. Even if you are continuing with All About Reading, take another look at these. See what you can find that would be useful. Because there are things like the syllable division rules, the jobs of silent E, these things you should laminate. If you're going to keep using All About Reading, laminate these sheets. You can also get these in the activity book, so you can pull them out and laminate them. You don't have to rip apart your instruction manual. Then it talks about how to handle the schwa sound, which is really useful. Because I have a hard time explaining that to my kids. Why is it not problem? Why is it problem? And how do you know when you should say problem instead of problem, for example? Then Appendix K has tips and activities for using the practice sheets. Now these practice sheets can be really boring, honestly. If you can find some way to make it fun, for example, my kids like when I make a copy of it and cut it apart to make a racetrack and they can drive their cars down it. Or sometimes you can make a strip and feed it to, to the monster or cut just chunks of it apart, read the words on that little chunk and then feed it to the monster. I don't know why, but for some reason, it makes it more entertaining for my kids doesn't have to make sense to me as long as it works. That's why I bought All About Reading, because it doesn't have to make sense to me that way. I just do what they say. It also has activities for reviewing phonograms and activities for reviewing word cards. Now these three sections, appendices K, L, and M, are probably the most useful ones in my view. Because these tell you how to make the very repetitive and kind of boring parts of learning to read much more interesting and more appealing to your kids. And probably the biggest battle you are going to have with your kids is getting them to do the work. Just making it appealing for them. If you can get them interested in what they're doing, 
then you won't have to fight them to do the work and they will absorb it better. Another note about these lessons, if you take a look here, it's particularly clear. You start out with, say, lesson 31, TCH, that's the phonogram. Then lesson 32, you read a story. Lesson 33, phonogram, 34, story, 35, prefixes, 36, story, and it keeps going like that where, for the most part, the kids learn a phonogram and then the next lesson is a story applying it. I really like this format because the kids get to read stories throughout. The only problem my kids have with this kind of format is they want to read the story right away when they do the lesson. So some days we end up doing the phonogram lesson and then we read the story. So we end up doing two lessons in one day just because my kids are pushing so hard to read the story. And it might not work for all families, but my kids pick up on reading fairly quickly. So we don't need to work really hard to get them to understand the phonograms. And they actually learn it better when they read the story. If you're new to All About Reading, take a look at this page that asks, is your student in the right level? Go through this, make sure that all of these check marks, or at least most of them, fit your student to make sure that you're not pushing them too hard because it's never a good formula for getting your student to cooperate. In the beginning, they also explain how to use the instructor manual, which I won't go over. You can read that page if you have the curriculum. If you have any questions about this, I can also answer them in the comments. This shows the elements of the program. There's the read aloud record, which I have never used. I don't really care. There are activity sheets, which are little games that are part of the student activity manual. Those usually are the ones that require preparation. The warm-up sheets, which help the kids work on vocabulary for a specific story. And honestly, we quite often skip these because my kids are picking up on reading fast enough that they really don't need to do these sheets. They're much better off just reading the story because it keeps their interest. Some kids might need this and they might find it more interesting and make the story less intimidating. Then separate from the warm-up sheets, there are these practice sheets or fluency sheets, and these can be really long sometimes. These are the ones that I will cut up into cards or cut up into strips and use one of the games in, I think it's Appendix K I said. But these are really good for getting a lot of practice quickly. Something I should note here is the recommendation with this program is to work on reading for 20 minutes a day and that's it. You don't have to finish an entire lesson in one day. So if this practice sheet is completely overwhelming, like say it's four pages long. If it just gets to be too much for your student, stop. Just continue the next day. You don't need to get through an entire lesson. It's not designed to be that way. If your kids are okay with going longer than 20 minutes, great. Do what works for you. When you get your All About Reading shipment, you'll need some sort of a box to store your cards. I just buy the box from the company because the cards fit exactly and it's sturdy, and then I don't have to spend time trying to find another one. Well, actually, I already spent the time trying to find another one, and I didn't find a better alternative. Then, just get the divider cards. I tried to make my own. It didn't work as well. Just get the divider cards. It's $4. You need to find the yellow phonogram cards and the green word cards. These are all perforated generally pretty nicely, so all you have to do is fold them a few times and rip them apart, and then at least have them sorted by lesson. They don't have to be sorted in exact order. Along with this program, you either need the letter tile app or the physical letter tiles. I have the physical letter tiles and I'm not sure if I like them. The kids like to play with them on the board, but the problem is when I use them, it's slow. And I knock them on the floor all the time and then the two-year-olds run off with them. If there is even a little bit of a lull in the lesson, my kids start messing around because I've got two of them at a time doing this. This is another part of All About Reading that because my kids are catching on to reading quickly, I usually just skip it. If I really want to show them something on the board, I'll just get markers and write it out and maybe use some of the tiles that have multiple letters on them. Like if we're working with a particular multiple letter phonogram, I will use that tile and then I'll just write in the rest of the word. So let's take a look at the format of the first regular lesson in All About Reading 3. This is for the phonograms AI and AY. 
In the introduction portion, it explains the objective for this lesson, what you're trying to do, the supplies that you will need so that you can gather all of your supplies before the lesson starts and make sure that you have everything. You don't want to get to the middle of the lesson and then have to spend 10 minutes looking for something because you're going to lose your kids' attention. Or at least I will. I've got two five-year-olds I'm trying to teach. Before you begin, you can skim this section or if you're newer to the curriculum, you can actually read it. I usually don't bother reading this because I'm accustomed enough to the curriculum and I kind of just do it on the fly at this point. Sometimes I will skim this and find some useful tidbits in it. So it is still useful to have it there, but the way this curriculum is written, it is excellent for somebody who is first starting to teach their kids to read or who is a first time teacher with this stuff, like new homeschool parents or somebody who is just switching to this curriculum. But once you get used to it, you don't need everything in here, but it's still nice to have it just in case. If you have to hand it off to someone else, then it's great. Or if you are just brain dead for the day for whatever reason, you don't have to think. It's all laid out here. Before you begin continues on, and then here is a preview of the new syllable division rule. So this shows you a new rule that they're going to go through in this lesson. Then for the actual lesson with the kids, there is a review portion. Usually you go over the phonogram cards and then a prior concept that will be used more heavily in this lesson. Then there's the new teaching portion. So you hold up that card, go over what it is, hold up that card, go over what it is. And then for the letter tiles, you move the two letter tiles that are relevant to the lesson into the workspace, which is the middle of the whiteboard instead of around the edges. And then you start using the AI letter tiles to form a bunch of words and it shows you exactly what to do step by step and where your finger should be pointing. So it's p a n t. Then it shows you each time p a n t. And then you slide your finger across to say paint. So you always have this method of sounding out the words phonogram by phonogram. And it takes an entire page to explain that, which is really unnecessary at some point, but Again, if you're new to teaching reading, this is excellent. And then you do the same thing with train, gain, blah, 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 and eventually get to this part where they condense it a little bit. You start with pain, switch a letter, rain, switch a letter, no, add a letter, train, trail, rail, pale, paid. So this is playing a game, sort of, with the kids that uses the same AI phonogram in the middle but changes one letter each time so that it's just a little bit different and that way they are sounding out different words but they're close enough to each other that it's not completely new. So this helps a little bit with fluency. Then it'll be the same thing with the AY letter tile. And do you remember back here where it said review the syllable separation rules. It comes into play here where they're figuring out what kind of syllable this is. This is one of the newer ones called a vowel team syllable. Then that's the end of the new teaching portion and they get into the games. And these are usually really simple games like it's a selection of cards and they have to read the card and then put the card in the pond or take the pond, take the card out of the pond, something like that. So these are the games that I think are kind of boring, but my kids like them, so who am I to judge? Then it goes, after the game, it goes back to this syllable division rule with two vowel tiles where you split the syllables. So in this one, you find the two vowels, split it down the middle, and since the first one is an open syllable, meaning it ends in a vowel, it's die. And the second one is a closed syllable, meaning it ends in a consonant, it's et, with a short e sound. Because open syllables have long vowel sounds, closed syllables have short vowel sounds. Die et, die et. And that's what it goes through here in painstaking detail to make sure that you understand. And this is the sheet that I said you should laminate that has all of the um, syllable rules on it. And then it applies a similar rule to me ow. Open syllable for me with the long vowel, then vowel team syllable ow. 
Then it goes over the word cards that you review that use the phonogram that's taught in this lesson. And there are a few of these cards with the frogs on them. These are leap words, which doesn't mean that it's a sight word. It means that the kids haven't learned the rule for this word yet. So effectively right now it's a sight word, but they will learn the rule for this eventually. These are just introduced early so that they can have a more interesting story. So in this lesson it says I and our. Then you file away these cards for review later to make sure that they gain fluency with it and then practice fluency with the fluency sheets. So that's one of the teaching lessons. Then if we flip over to the reading lesson, it's the same kind of format, reviewing some concept that they've learned before like onomatopoeia. So there, there's a little more language arts in here than I expected. I thought it was just going to be reading, but this isn't stuff that an advanced reader would have a problem with. Like, it doesn't include handwriting when a five-year-old just doesn't have the motor control for handwriting, for instance. So teach your prep, review your Review the word and phonogram cards. Discuss onomatopoeia. There's an activity to prep for the story. Again, it's just some cards that you put in these little blanks. And then the warm-up sheet for the story, which goes over the vocabulary for the story to make sure that the kids have at least seen the words that are going to be in the story. Then sometimes you go over some vocabulary to make sure that the kids actually understand the words that are in the story, because I have run into it quite a few times that my kids can sound out the words, but they don't know what the words mean. And then finally, you get to reading the story. And after every lesson, they recommend reading for 20 minutes each day, either reading to your kids or having them read, depending on the level that they're at. Sometimes you can do team reading where you read part of it, they read part of it. And my kids love these sticker charts. And the big interesting one is the level three student packet. This includes an activity book. These green things are the word practice cards or review cards. And then the yellow things are the phonics cards or phonogram cards, I guess they would call them. And there's something white in the middle there that I'm not sure what it is. I'll have to open it up and find out. Let's see. Oh, and of course, they send a different sticker sheet with every level two. This one is monkeys. Before we've had frogs and I think zoo animals. So again, here's the student packet. What I do with this is I just rip all of the sheets out when I first get it and I scan all of them into my computer because this is going to have to last through at least three sets of twins, hopefully more. So inevitably something's going to get trashed at some point and I don't want to be worried about whether or not we're going to trash a paper game from the reading set and then I don't have that for future kids. Then what do I do? All of these sheets are perforated. You probably can't see it in here. Sometimes the perforation is good, sometimes it's not so good. So sometimes I have to take an exacto knife to this too. The activity book also doesn't change a whole lot. It always has fluency sheets and it always has hands-on activities with cutouts from the pages. This is a student activity book for level three, Swing Into Reading. Since this is a little bit later, I've already pulled all of the pages out. Once I have all these pages pulled out, I sort them about four lessons at a time and put them into file folders and then put them into my file cabinet. That way I don't have to have all of this out at one time. The activity book includes a progress chart in color. I always end up printing the black and white one from online because I have two kids doing this, so I need two copies. And if one person gets color and the other doesn't, we're going to have a fight. There's a read aloud record. And then it gets right into the activity sheets for the lessons. So this is the review lesson. Let me show you how this lesson works. There's this castle. And on the back, it shows two dashed lines, which you're supposed to cut slits in the paper. And then to go along with the castle, there are these strips of fish that go into the holes that you cut. Cut out all these strips, and then as the fish swim past, the student reads the words. So 
it adds a little bit of interest for the early elementary set. And they very helpfully include a sheet where you can write your own words. If you have a lot of review to do at the beginning of level three, I would recommend taking these out and laminating them and then taking a wet erase marker and writing the words on here so that you can wipe it off and rewrite them as many times as you want to. Here's one of those sheets you need to laminate, the jobs of silent E. I'm going to take this and laminate it when I do the cards for level three. Here's the other one, syllable division rules. I'm going to take this and laminate it too. Then we get into lesson two, which is AI and AY. Of course, it comes with another game. It's a fairly simple game. Again, you cut along all of the dashed lines, cut all the piggy cards out. Then you have this mud puddle that the piggies play in. And I haven't read the instructions on it yet, so I'm not exactly sure how to play this game. But you just cut out these and either you put the piggies in the mud puddle and then take them out after you read them. Or it might be that you have the student read the card and then piggy jumps in the mud puddle after they read it, one way or the other. It adds an element of interaction and just a little fun for the students. This is what the practice sheet looks like. So you can see how this would be a little bit dull if the kids don't like to do repetitive work. Some kids like to do that, mine don't. And then it continues onto the back of that page. And sometimes it can be front and back of two pages. So it can get to be really long. These are the ones that you look in appendix K or L or whatever it was and find a way to make it into a game. Or maybe just cut it into strips so that they can do one section at a time as a card and you just do it throughout the day. Take a few minutes here and a few minutes there. Then this is getting into lesson three and we'll stop here. That gives you an idea of what a lesson looks like in the activity book. Then at the end of the activity book, there is a certificate of achievement. So your students can have a certificate for finishing the entire level, which that is quite an accomplishment for a four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, however old your kids are. This is what that white sheet is. These are the little tiles that go on our whiteboard, so I'll have to put a magnet on the back of each of these. Apparently, with the original um, letter tile set, they don't include consonant suffixes, blah, blah, blah. consonant suffixes, vowel suffix, blah, suffixes, prefixes, and, well, we do have these reading syllable tags, so we'll just have extras of those, I guess. But those are new. Truth be told, I don't use the whiteboard that much anymore because my kids get the concepts so fast we don't really need the letter tiles and I keep knocking them on the floor. It's really kind of annoying. I'm almost tempted to go get the app, but I... Actually, I might have a tablet. I'll have to think about that. I do have an iPad. Might be a good idea. Anyhow, on to these green cards here. The green cards, these are pretty much always nicely perforated. These are all of the review words for each lesson. So it starts out with things like day, stay, rain, mail, today, hair, that sort of thing, and progresses to 80, neighbor, way, wait, Joe, bear, break, pair, vacation, relaxation. So I guess that's getting more complex as it goes. I'm not really a good judge of what's complex in reading and what's not. That's why I got all about reading, because I'm not a reading teacher. I'm more of a science teacher. Even that, I'm not a good judge of what preschoolers should learn. I taught college, not preschool. So these, we see every level. All of these are marked lesson one through, let's see. All these sheets are for lesson one. Yeah, it gets into level, or lesson two, three, and four on that last sheet, but really, there's only like two and a half of these sheets that are new, so I don't even think I'm going to laminate the other ones, because I have two copies of them laminated already for level one and level two, and I probably have another copy of them laminated from pre-reading. I just don't need, what, four copies of the basic phonograms. 
I'll have I'll check that they don't have any extra sounds, but I kind of doubt it. These new ones, I will laminate. Again, that's a lot of work and a lot of cutting. I have had kids bite them. I've had them dropped. I've had them stepped on, sat on. I haven't quite had anything spilled on it yet. I've had lots of grubby little hands touching them. So just having them encased in plastic seems like a good idea when they have to last through six kids or more. Not to mention, by the end of this, I'll still have cards in good condition that I can then sell with the entire set because I should have the entire set intact. That's going to be a while, though. Hopefully these aren't completely obsolete by then. Reading never gets to be obsolete. I also got another one of these boxes for those green and yellow cards. Now, you don't have to use this box. You can actually get a box on Amazon or wherever that will fit the cards, but they're not quite the right size for a normal note card box. So I had a really hard time finding a box that would actually fit these cards well. And every box that I found is pretty comparable in price and structure to the ones from All About Reading. And you might think, well, can't you just shove all the levels, or at least a couple of levels, in one box? Well, no. I tried it. It didn't work. They didn't fit. It might be because I laminate them, because that does take up extra thickness. It doesn't seem like much on each card, but it does accumulate. In this box, I get a set of dividers, and I also tried making my own dividers for the last set for, I guess it would be level two. They just didn't work as well. I mean, these kind of, um, not really delaminate, but they start to split down the middle of the paper. But the ones that I tried to make are really kind of flimsy. And the tabs don't stay on well, and I can never get the tabs at the right height. So for four bucks, I'm just getting these again. And I even got another copy of them that I apparently already opened. I don't remember opening that. Maybe it came that way. But I got another one of them to put in the level 2 box to replace my jerry-rigged dividers. And these little foam spongy things are just to take up extra space in the box so that the cards don't fall over. So if you ever get these, don't throw them away. You need them. So that's level 3 all about reading. It seems like these lessons are really long, but if you have a struggling reader, it is great to have so many different ways to approach it. If you have a more advanced reader, you can just skip some of it because it actually is modular enough that you can just say, skip the fluency sheets. Or if your kid doesn't like games, don't do the game. Just modify it to fit your needs. It's not tied together tightly enough that you can't just skip part of it. Now, I may have mentioned this in prior videos, but the reason that I chose All About Reading specifically is I have advanced readers. My oldest are not quite five and a half yet, and they're about to move into level three, so that's like, I think somewhere around second grade level, and they're not even eligible for kindergarten. So, their reading is way beyond their writing and way beyond all of their other skills. I don't want a language arts curriculum that incorporates writing and incorporates handwriting because they just they can't keep up with it. I don't want them to get frustrated with their curriculum because they can't keep up with those elements. They just are not physically developed enough to do that yet. They're getting there, but they're not there. And I don't want to hold them back in reading because their fine motor skills aren't up to the writing. I'm really excited to start level three with my big kids. They are doing so great with this reading program. And granted, they do pick up on reading pretty naturally and quickly on their own. But this, I feel, is a great introduction to reading and phonics and will lay them a great foundation for further studies. And it makes it easier for me because everything is laid out. All I have to do is basically kindergarten cut and paste. And sometimes that's about where I am with things. <laughs> so if you are considering all about reading, I highly recommend giving it a try. If you have any questions about All About Reading, I'd love to hear them. If you use All About Reading or have in the past, I'd love to hear what you think of it. Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to chat. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time.